Those Longhorns will now wait for their call, just like Emmanuel Acho back in 2012 before he was selected in round number six. We now welcome in Manny Acho to talk about the wait. First off, Manny, what would be your piece of advice for these Longhorns waiting for that call? First off, uh, good to be good to be with you. Uh, the piece of advice that I would have to say is have no expectations. You know, that's what my brother told me uh, the year prior to my draft experience. That's what I've already told um, some of the other guys, specifically, you know, Jackson, Mike Davis, those guys. I told them have no expectations because whether you want to or not, you will subliminally try to tell yourself you were going in said round. And so I've been trying to preach to them over and over, set no expectations for yourself, and similarly, let no one set an expectation for you. Just go in it with an open mind. So what is the most common question you have received from that group of players? The biggest thing is where did you think you were going to go? You know, that's oftentimes what they ask me because they have speculations, whether they've read them online, their families read them for them. They always ask, you know, who do you think was going to take you? And to which I tell them, the least most expected team is a team that ended up taking me, and I've tried to tell them the same thing. What do you remember the most about your weight? The weight itself. <laughs> um, I, I remember just sitting there. You know, I figured I wasn't going to go on day one because that was only the first round. I figured I had a shot to go um, day two, which was second and third round. But worst case scenario, I was going to go early fourth round. Uh, tearing the quad, it, tearing my quad at the combine made things a little bit more ambiguous just because who knows if they knew whether or not I was fully recovered, et cetera. But the weight itself was the most memorable and the most miserable part of the combine. What was that like going to sleep after day two of the draft and you still had not been selected? That wasn't too painful because the same thing happened to my brother the year before, you know, and he could have gone anywhere from late first round to, to late third round. And so he had to go through the same thing. I watched, I experienced that moment with him. So waiting day two wasn't miserable. I just expected to hop off the board to the draft boards, that is, first thing um, day three morning. And so after that time started to pass, that's when I started to freak out. <laughs> well, you didn't have to wait too much longer. Selected in the sixth round. How did you find out, though, where you were going to go? So, day three came around. Um, day three is the fourth through seventh round. After the fourth round passed, I kind of stopped watching. Um, had a piano in the house. I started to play. Had some friends over. We tried to play games. But in just drafting yourself from the draft, you're only truly focusing on it that much more because you realize – what is it that you're distracting yourself from? And so I was just trying to distract myself, finally got a phone call. I looked up, didn't recognize the number. Uh, the Cleveland Browns turned out to call me, and the first thing I thought was, really, this long and I'm going to Cleveland. Um, but then I realized I had Cole McCoy up there, and um, so I wasn't, wasn't too worried after that. Was there any part of you that wanted to say no thanks? No, after that long wait, but the beauty of it is you can always say you were drafted in the NFL draft. There and you with go. under 300 players being drafted and over 60,000 collegiate football players, there's something significant about that. No matter if you play one snap or a million snaps in the NFL, you can always say I was drafted in the National Football League. And there's a group of Longhorns hoping for the same. You've mentioned those names that you've talked to. You've seen them play a lot of football here at the University of Texas. Of this current group waiting for that call in the draft, who intrigues you the most? i got to say two names. I have to say the two names I mentioned in, in Jackson, Jeff Coat, and Mike Davis, um, mainly because you have no idea where they could go. I think Jeff Coat is a first-round talent that could fall easily to the fourth round. You know, I, however, I see him going, you know, hopefully he goes middle to late second. But he's similar to my brother in that he's supposed to translate to an outside backer. However, he's played defensive end his whole life. Similarly, I think Mike Davis will have a much better pro career than collegiate career. So will he be drafted off potential or will he be drafted off production? With that being said, all it takes is for one team to fall in love. Will that team fall in love in the second, third round, or will they not fall in love till the fifth or sixth? All i got to say is you're better than Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper combined. 
Not quite the hair, but the knowledge and the insight, it's right there. Emmanuel Acho, we appreciate the insight. Thanks again. You got it. Good to be with you.